All right. Hello there. Karen Beers here with a new project or a new card. I'm basically what I'm going to do. I've got this tag that I made a while ago using Seth After products. And what I'm going to do is create a pocket for it. I have a book that I'm working on, a junk journal. I'll just give you a quick peek but it's a class I'm teaching and this is some of what's going on. So I wanted to create a, a pocket so I can put my tag in there somewhere in the book. And I thought this would be a good place to start. So this tag was made and I'm gonna have, if you go to my blog, it'll have the link to the post that we're doing today plus this tag. But this tag was made with some of Seth's last release and that's using, you know, like I use the numbers here. This was used in the background. And then the word journey and, of course, a circle, which is one of my favorites. I love that circle. Just a bunch of odds and ends. But again, I'll have the link to this. Um, I'll, have the, I'll have the link to this tag in this post as well, so you can go check it out. I used a bunch of different te techniques on this. So I did want to do something something that accompanied that or went with that. And I've gone with, Seth has a new set of stamps out. This is one of the stamps. I just love it. One of the things I love about Seth's stamp sets is you can literally create a project just using one set because what he does is you've got the background images so, you know, some sort of some background images, then you have some focal images that you can use, and then you have a quote or two quotes. So this is just what's great. And you can see he did the same thing here, as well as here. You know, some, some background images, something that could be used as a focal point, here or here, or even a piece of this, and then the quote. So it's just a great, or the word. So it's just, a. I love that he does that. And lately he's been doing that. And then I also have, because these words, I guess I could use the word memories for journey, but I might put trip as my word or something like that. And so I have also pulled out his newest, this is from his last release as well. And this is a really fun, grungy letter set. And it's one of my favorites. So I might pull that out. But to start with, what I'm going to do is make a background using some of Seth's new colors with Paper Artsy. This is all with Paper Artsy release as well. Paper Artsy does his stamps uh, that I'll be using today. And so the, the newest released included these cactus colors. It was based on the idea being what's in a desert. So desert brush, agave, and fuzzy cactus if you know Seth he likes to go to New Mexico every year and or twice a year when there's no COVID and he teaches out there so I think this was definitely part of the inspiration and then I've pulled some of his older colors we've got double denim smoked paprika and mud splat this set also comes with a brown which I don't have so I've just pulled the mud splat the mud splat out and again part of it is I, I pulled some of the colors that were used in this tag being the double denim and there's some brown going on I didn't use this but this is uh, another I think that's an ink um, so I pulled the some of the same colors so that it will you know it'll coordinate a little bit and chances are I'll go with the double denim because that would be good but then I want something that'll help my word pop and I'm thinking maybe the smoked paprika. This is one of my go-tos. I don't know why, because I'm not an orange person, but I love this color. And then that would go nicely with the word journey there. But I do also want to use some of the embossing powders. So we'll just see where we go. So what I've done is I've taken black and white cardstock. This will be a good size to be my pocket. And I'm going to work, I'm going to make two and then see which I like the best. I am coming to you from my recycling really working on the concept i'm a, i'm big on the recycling so rather than have a nice pristine color background i'm using i'm building a background as i go that way i'm not wasting ink nor paper so i hope that's okay with you and i do have a brayer and i i guess i used it and i didn't clean it because there's a thread on it so i was playing with um 
I was playing with my brayer and some threads and did not clean it and the thread stuck to there, but that could create some interesting texture. So we'll just roll with that. I am gonna use a color pa uh, deli piece of deli paper to get my inks going. And one of the reasons why I like using these is then I use them in my art. So for example, here's one that was started as a palette. And then I added to it, and now what I can do is tear the images out. And maybe we'll do that too. Maybe we'll add some of that. Because here's more of Seth's stamps up here. So that might be fun. You never know. But that's what I like to do as far as my palette. Because I don't like cleaning. I don't like cleaning. I don't like cleaning palettes. So I'd rather have something that's reusable again. All right. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to give these a shake. And put some colors out and what I'll do to start with I'm just going to ink up my brayer and I'm just going to come along like this and see my dirty brayer is giving me some interesting texture already so that's sort of a bonus and I think what I'll do for this one I'm just going to brayer on some color this is a technique that Seth likes doing a lot so I thought I would just follow suit I could have brought out my gel press as well, but I don't know. I just felt like going directly to paper. So that is the fuzzy cactus. Now let's see what happens when we add some agave. That I really like that color, sort of a minty green, which, you know, minty green is pretty on point for a color. So I probably didn't want to necessarily cover that part up. So I think what I'm going to do is just take another piece of card and pull some of that. So I'm not, I do want to be able to see that. Oh, look, I got some more images. I do want to be able to see that fuzzy cactus underneath. So the idea would be, and then I can just use that for a quote. The idea is to just try and get it on the spots that don't already have color, potentially. That's okay too. Layers are good. All right, and then the Desert Blush. So these colors are very, they're very muted. They're all, opaque so they have very good coverage again with the paper artsy they put you can see that covers the lines completely as opposed to something that's translucent so they are pretty good about labeling them so it's kind of fun but you get the idea of what i'm getting i'm kind of losing that um I really like that agave, so I might go back in with that agave again. Whereas here, the agave shows up quite prominently. So interesting doing it on sort of the same colors on a black cardstock versus a white. You do get quite a bit of a difference in my background. But that's, I think that's a good starting point. So here we are. What I'm doing is bringing in, I'm going to do some stencil work, but I am going to emboss. And I guess I'll just continue on in both colors. So on this one, I didn't, I just used some embossing for the title, but it was clear. But again, I want to keep this handy for my color palette. And let's move these out of the way. Okay, so... I've got a color swatch book that I have here that I've been working on, and I've got Seth Apter's Wow Trios. All of these products I'm using, you can find at Top Flight Stamps. I'll put the links below to my blog, which have all the individual links for the products. It just makes it easier, and that way you can see photos and some step outs, all that good stuff. So. Seth has two sets with WOW and their trios, and one is the metallic set, which I might bring that in as well. But the one I want to use is this, this set, it's called Cosmic. And I think, so what's fun is you take your swatch and you look to see, well, what color, 
which color would I like to use? And again, keeping in mind my tag. So I am, I'm leaning, of course, I always lean towards this because I love this color. I love that aqua color. I think I'm going to go more with the blue moon. However, I'm going to do it with paint as well. So that will change the color a little bit. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. I'm pulling some Paper Artsy stencils. Got a few here. Again, links on my blog. And let's just start with, and I have used some of them on here. So I'm going to I'm going to start with ones that I haven't used, so which is this. I'm going to use the diamond shape on that. I really like that image. I just love that bird, too. Maybe we'll have to incorporate that somehow. The journey, birds on a wire. I also like this uh, dot. Always loves circles, loves dot. Okay, so. And you can also do this with a brayer and paint and your stamps. I am going to put it on a little more thickly because I do want my embossing powders to show up. So let's get that blue moon. The thing that's great about these embossing is they have all the different, it's all different colors and thicknesses. So it creates a really dynamic look. Fancy catch paper to catch my embossing powder, which I've already started throwing around. So one of the things you want to do to ensure success in embossing is to heat up your heat gun. Again, I'm using my Sizzix Dual Power. So the Sizzix has a high and a low setting. High, that's high. That's low. And so what's great about that is you can heat it with the high underneath and it heats a lot quick, quicker and then switch to the low for on top. So you'll see me do that. And so then I'm going to kind of think about where I want my words as well. I think I'm going to probably put the words down here in this corner. So I'm going to not do as much stencil work in this area and I'll do it more around where it's going to go. I've got my double denim on my paper, it is an opaque, so I'll get good coverage. And I'm going to shake this up. I'm going to get everything ready because what we're going to do this time is to sprinkle. This one's quite full, so I need to, I want to get a good, the, these ones you have to shake because the colors are a different weight and they will, there we go. You see how now there's less clear ones on the top. So I'm going to get that at the ready because you do want to move quite quickly, even though it is paint, so it takes a little longer to dry. So what we're going to do, I'm going to stamp, or I'm going to stencil, I'm going to pounce using a cosmetic foam. And then I'm going to quickly just sprinkle randomly now we'll see if it catches because i don't feel like one of the challenges with the paper artsy is it dries quite quickly but i'll show you another way around that if it doesn't so i'm just heating underneath and then i come on top i'm just speeding this up for you what to do is shake my embossing powder off which is kind of crazy so now I just have it everywhere. So that's fine. It just adds texture. I'm not going to worry about that. But I have come up with a nice solution for the paint drying quickly. So let's do this. Let's switch this up a bit. And the beauty of using a stencil, essentially. So I'm going to come back in and I'm going to do a couple more. Of these I'm just gonna sponge them on and let them dry I'm not gonna emboss yet because again I just had this idea which is kind of fun I think I'm gonna add some of that mud splat as well to the mix I'm going to do some circles up here
All right, we've got a little bit of background going on. So I'm gonna keep in mind that I'm gonna add some stamping as well on that. So for this one, I'm going to come in with the same colors. But I'm just gonna move the textures around a bit. So I've got a couple of those circles. There we go. Just have a couple of those textures. And they are quite, you can see the difference, they are quite dark. They show up much better, obviously, on the lighter print, but still, they do add some nice texture. So what I'm going to do, this paint dries quite quickly. In fact, you can see it's already pretty much dry. So I'm going to make sure that that's dry. Then what I'm going to do is come in with my stencil. Again, I just realized this would be a great way to do things. And one of the products that Seth has is a mixed media embossing brush. And this makes really great for stenciling if you want to stencil. So what I'm going to do, and I should have kept an eye on where, but it doesn't have to be precise. That's the other thing, right? So I know that actually, look, there's that little line. So I'm going to line that stencil back up. And as I said, it doesn't have to be completely precise for what we're doing. I'm gonna, I'm going to line that stencil up round about where that those marks were, and then I'm going to put a dollop of the embossing ink on my palette. I'm going to have my shake that up again. This one's quite full. But the idea is I want to get a good mixture of those colors. Because I'm using the embossing ink, I will have more time. It's designed specifically to put on the heavier sort of grungy materials like these powders. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm just going to sprinkle. And this time I'm going to shake it off. And close that up, put my embossing away where it can't be blown. So keeping in mind where that is. All right. And then I do have a little bit. Okay, that's better. So you can see that I've still got my paint. There's areas where there's not a lot of the embossing, but that's what I was looking for. All right, so here is what has happened. I went ahead, I had finished this card. You can see all the luscious numminess there. I used the Sea of Tranquility here and here with a couple of the stamps and then the crusty Copper there. And here's a really good way of seeing those circles, how there's some of the emboss is in there, but some of the paint shows as well. And I just didn't like it. It's just too busy. I'm still going to use this card for something else. I don't know. I might cut up pieces of it. Who knows? But I just found that that card was too busy. And so I went with the second card and I've, here's the finished sample. And what I've done is I've recreated it. And I'm going to show you what I've done because we had pretty much done up to this step. So in short, I had stenciled these areas with the Fresco Finish uh, Double Denim and Mud Splat. Then I came in with three of the different emboss and three different stamps, and that's what I'll do now to, just to show you, and then we'll go from there. Okay, because why not? So here's where we are, and what I did was I came in with that 
wonderful love this love this i don't know what you would call it diamond triple diamond image and then i came in with the blue what's it called blue moon okay and you know so using an embossing pad you can use whichever embossing pad you have i like wow it's pretty juicy i'm going to stamp and come in with the powder tap off and then heat it up i'm going to show you this one in standard motion but the next two i'll speed up but here i am i have my heat gun on high i'm heating from underneath and what's really cool you can kind of see how the embossing powder bubbles and sort of forms up and then it becomes shiny and the way to know when your emboss is set is if you take your finger and it doesn't feel sandy and nothing moves then you know it's done all right and that looks pretty good so i did end up really in liking the contrast of having the three different colors in the three different places. I think that was one of the reasons why I liked this one better. Now I'm gonna get that sea of tranquility, give it a shake, get ready to go. Stamp it on. Okay, that's looking good. And lastly, my favorite stamped image, which I've been using a lot lately, is this wonderful little circle. And my favorite, or current favorite, emboss, which is crusty Copper. Kind of stamp it in the corner. So I ended up not speeding this up because you can really see how this powder, as it's heating all of a sudden, it just goes shiny right there, bam, and it goes shiny all the way around. And that's what you're looking for when you're heat embossing. And there we have it. So that's where I am at this point. Love it. So then what I decided to do was to just take my pen, and again, it's a technique I've been doing for quite some time, but it's funny how you, how you have techniques that you do a lot, and then you kind of get away from them and then come back to them. And this is one of those. I haven't done this recently. I used to do this to all my projects, but it's just to take a pen and go in and create some shadows. And it's fun too to even do some mark making and then just kind of smudge those out as well. And it's just a really good way of making these images pop a little bit, giving them a little more, I don't even know, grungy numminess. That. The other reason why this is a good technique is if you look here, I did a better job of stenciling these images than I did on this one. 
well, I can come back in and kind of frame those out a bit, and that makes them look more defined as the originals were. I feel like this needs one as well. Kind of putting that shape back in there almost. And again, one of the reasons why I love fresco finish paints is because you can use a pen on them right away they, because they dry matte. The challenge is if I were to use a pen on regular acrylic paint within, because it's not completely dry, even though it's dry to the touch, it's not completely dry for about four or five hours, I'll wreck my pen. So if you have those white signal ball pens and you can't figure out why you're wrecking them all the time, that's why. Because those pens, if you're drawing on a acrylic paint or an inked surface before it's completely cured, that, that product is getting inside that pen nib. And so one of the great things about the fresco finish, there's no waiting. Once it's dry to the touch, you're good to go in with whatever pen you want. You don't have to worry about ruining your pen. Okay, so like that. See the difference, how that just gives it, I'll bring the, I don't have the other one. Just gives it that extra depth. Now I'm gonna go in, I think what I, I'm gonna do and what I did on my sample is I'm gonna come in with a white Posca pen. Love this. This was a Seth Apter. If you go to Seth Apter's store, he sometimes sells his pencil cases and this is his art. Just love it. So I'm gonna come in with this Posca pen, shake it up first little bit and I'm just going to outline this image sort of in the same way just to give it a little oomph. Just helps those images pop a bit and I can come in and you know do a little bit of the detail may have been lost. Like that, looks good. And the same with this, just create that shadow. There's no right or wrong way to do this for this purpose. I do like to as you see, I'm kind of going under all the image and then the inside. It's the same thing. I can kind of draw in some of that, those shapes that had been lost. And I'm not going to do it with the copper. I just left the copper. I suppose I could do it with the black. I guess I could do it with the white. I don't know. Let's see. We'll do it this way and see if it... Thing with the copper, it's a pretty kind of drastic difference. That's another thing because this is an acrylic, this is a paint based marker. If I don't like something, you can go in right away and just basically erase it and then come back in. Oh, that's good enough. There we go. Might just do the inside. All right. There we have it. So now let's get our quote on there, or our word. So I've got my, my card, and what I'm going to do is show you how I popped in that word. 
this as i i think i showed you at the beginning of the video these are my deli papers i use so you can see here is where i use this as a palette and then i just came in and stamped randomly stamped a bunch of images and did some stenciling and then i love to take these and use them as backgrounds or for words for quotes for art journal and so here you can see i just took one of these it had mainly paint but there's some of one assessed stamps right there stamped in and i just stamped my quote on there and popped it on and it's a bit translucent so you can see some of the color underneath i just love that look and what makes this work so well is we've got the cool colors in the background and then the warm colors coming up with a little bit of cool but the the warmer big contracts bright colors more muted colors in the background so that's what i want to do for this and i was looking to see which what i could use or what i have that i could use and again it's remembering that my quote's going to be in black so for example that would be wouldn't create a lot of contrast behind there necessarily and i came across this Oh, I kind of like right here. I'm really liking the how the yellow shows up on there, the orange. So I've got these areas that I could, in fact, use as well. But they don't have a ton of imagery. Kind of like this with the... the again, that's... Um, this is the smoked paprika. And that's cerise, cerise. I love to use that a lot. But I like the idea of that. But I don't have a lot of imagery behind. So what I want to do is take a couple of stamps and, you know, I could do it with stencils as well, stamps or stencils or a bit of both, which is always nice, and just create this little background area. And I think what I'm going to do is just put some random, random inks on here. And actually, let's take this off because we just, you kind of want, again, random just some random images in some different colors to sort of create that background for my word to end up on. Come in with a bit of French navy. Might be a bit dark, so I'm gonna do it fairly light. Yeah, see how that's a bit dark. But that's the idea. Let's take, this is from that same set. Let's see what this is. It looks like sort of hieroglyphics. So you get the idea. That's giving me a bit of a base to stamp my word on. And so then I'm gonna come along with my focal word and I'm going to use an archival ink for this part even though this isn't quite dry it's all right I'm just gonna put it somewhere in the middle so I get something like that and now I am gonna let that dry before I tear it out All right, so I've dried that up. This is still seems a bit wet. No, oh, I guess it's just there must be some glue. There's something shiny there. So I'm just going to tear the, my image out sort of randomly. And one of the tricks for those of you who don't tear very much is you just sort of put your thumb where you want your tear to go and use your other fingers, finger to push down. And then that kind of gives you that nice, nice tear edge, if that makes sense. Because you do want it to look randomly torn, but you also need to, you know, you don't want to chop off your S at the end or your letters or, so you do want a little bit of control. So I like that. I think that's going to be good. I might just tear this off a little bit just so it doesn't cover up that image too much. Refining my tearing as it were. 
we go. Now these little pieces are great when you if you do if you do any decorative napkin sort of thing or even on an art journal page you can come along or another card I could use that piece that's got a lot of nummy interest so I'll keep that because yeah we have to keep everything pretty much and I'm going to take some decoupage glue or you can take whichever glue you like I just keep my decoupage in a little easy travel bottle and then refill it as needed I do have a designated glue brush as well. See, glue. Because the glue, decoupage glue will wreck your brush. And uh, it's a good idea to just have them a little separate. And I'll pop that on. I'm gonna keep in mind that I am going to sew the edge so I want it a little bit from the edge and I don't want to smush with that too much because I, there is some imagery now you'll notice I did lose most of the imagery or where I stamped rather there wasn't a lot of imagery going on but it still looks really good and I can always come back in and add some more to that but that's basically that's it that's my card so you can see the difference with the colors they look they both look good and then all I would do is I came in with here and I just sewed sort of sketchily like I, I did a straight stitch and then I switched to zigzag and then I came reversed did a straight stitch reversed move my machine around a bit to get just sort of a wonky a wonky finish so now I'm going to come along with my book, and I've decided I'll probably put it on this page. I just like that it has this image here. This is um, 49th and Market paper, and I will put glue side, bottom side, and then my tag will just pop in. I'm not doing this right now because this class is not finished I uh, haven't finished teaching it. So, but you get the idea. That's what that's going to look like. And now I have this great, great little element in my junk journal. I think what I'm going to do is put writing paper and do some stamping and glue it on there so I have a place to write, write down. And then I can pop a photo here. And how great will that look? So that's it. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you have a chance to get inky.